Have you heard the idea that the reason that music doesn't make any money or that independent artists are struggling right now is because there's more money in the music business than ever, but it's just not being funneled the right way. And if we just reorganized how we distributed the money, then independent artists can make a living off their music. Well, as nice as that sounds, that lie is actually designed to keep you stuck. And in today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the actual three reasons why music just doesn't make the money that it used to make and what to do about it. So the first thing that we need to dive into and we need to understand is that I got a haircut. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I had some people comment and I can't deny it anymore. Yes, I got a new haircut. For those of you that are new to the channel, I used to have very long hair and uh, now I do not. But don't worry, it'll always grow back. This is a new era. In fact, I wanna make a video soon about the importance of taking risks when br changing your brand and doing new things like that. But that's for another day. I wanna talk to you about this uh, whole issue that really stems from a misunderstanding from Spotify. And uh, this Spotify misunderstanding really has caused a lot of grief for a lot of people because there is this story that's gone around. And let's just take a look at it like this. For a long time, artists were paid publishing royalties based off the specific medium to which we were getting lots of listens. So that was broadcasting, uh, radio and things like that. Now in the digital age, we've moved to more of a streaming type platform. Now you have to think about something. There is a difference from a legal perspective from music that earns royalties through a broadcasting medium versus a streaming medium because a broadcasting medium is a curated medium. What that means is this is where people make the playlist. You don't get a choice in what music is being listened to. You just get to choose which station you're gonna pick, right? That is broadcasting. And then on demand, is more akin to service, uh, streaming services, right? So streaming services have infinite, not infinite, but they have millions and millions of songs available at your fingertips on demand. So because the music is being consumed through a different medium, the royalties are paid out different. And there's this story that's gone around like, well, what really happened is Spotify bribed a judge who didn't understand how musicians were supposed to be paid. And what they're arguing is that musicians should be paying the same that they were being paid for broadcasting royalties as they are with streaming royalties. But legally, there's just no precedence for that since artists are actually being put on a platform like Spotify, like Apple Music, that is on-demand streaming. You couldn't legally pay them broadcasting royalties because that's not the correct medium from which the royalties are garnered. So that whole idea, I've seen it in the comments, is a complete an utter myth. And what we need to understand is one of the reasons that this model, this business shift, right, when we go from broadcasting to streaming, it's affected us in lots of ways that I don't have to be, I don't have to be redundant and tell you all the negative things that have happened to artists as a consequence, but one of the big ones is supply and demand. Because we went to a pri uh, predominantly streaming model, there is infinitely more supply than there is demand. Right? People don't have enough ears or time to listen to all the music that is available out there. And so as a consequence, whenever you have a commodity like music was and is, it's also a cultural artifact, but it's simultaneously a commodity. What happens is over time, the supply gets too great and the demand is too small, so the price goes down. And there's this misunderstanding that the reason that we're not being paid as much is because of Spotify bribing a judge or whatever, when really it comes down to the actual demand for what we do is lower than how much music is out there. And so that's driven the price down. And then as a consequence, musicians, we upload albums, some of us, as opposed to dripping out singles, which contributes to the problem. When you just drop a 12 song album all at once, you've just distributed 12 songs into the ecosystem all at once. Whereas opposed to if you took the same 12 songs and distributed them one month at a time, you would only be introducing one song per month in the ecosystem as opposed to 12 all in one day. So there's a lot of factors. I'm not blaming artists. I'm just saying that's one of the factors that's helping contribute to the supply and demand issue. But we have to look at it like this. People are saying, well, the problem is just Spotify isn't paying up. They should just pay up. Well, 70% of the revenue that Spotify gets goes right back to artists and paying out artists, okay? And I know what some of you guys are saying. They're saying, well, that's because they're paying out majority of a majority of those funds to the big artists. But I want you to think about this for a second. 
they're getting a majority of the income because they're getting a majority of the streams. Like, let's be honest, Billie Eilish and Khalid and a lot of these people are out there getting a billion streams on songs. Yeah, they're gonna be sending more money their way than they're gonna be sending to some independent artist who's only gotten 500 streams on their single since it was released last year. You understand, right? Like that's not Spotify being greedy, that's just meritocracy. That's literally like I didn't get enough streams to make the same amount, but I want you to look at it from a deeper level because some people know that labels will get better payouts for their artists. So then they're like, ha ha, that's where the discrepancy is. It's because there's that negotiated pay. Well, let's look at it. Us as independent artists, we get paid 0 0.0035 cents per stream. We all know that, right? Well, an, a label backed artist can get their payout negotiated to 0 0.005. I'm sorry, 0 0.0055. Well, that's slightly higher, right? It's about a third bigger than what you and I are getting paid. So that means if they were going to make, if, if we were gonna make 3.5 million, they would make 5.5 million. So they'd make an additional 2 million than we would. But I want you to think about that for a second. Is that really the biggest discrepancy that you think is contributing to what we see in, like people are like, independent artists are struggling. It's yeah, because a lot of them are not going out there and getting people to listen to their music. They're not getting fans. They're just expecting things to happen. And a lot of people are abiding by old industry standards like, oh, I gotta get signed to a record label, or I gotta do all these kind of things when really they should be investing and in becoming more entrepreneurial. Because as people have pointed out, Yes, back in the day, but the labels used to take care of all the business stuff. But since the industry has changed, the label has left that model behind just as much as the new independent artists have. They're not looking at you to build your business for you anymore. Those days are gone. Bye-bye. They're not coming back. So what you need to understand is if you can get to the point where a label is willing to invest in you, then you don't even need them. <laughs> right? So. Those days are gone, but we have to adapt to where we're at and try to do our best to survive. So I want you to understand that that Spotify misunderstanding is leading to a lot of confusion where people think, yeah, yeah, everything will be fixed in the music business if we could just make Spotify redistribute wealth. It's like, that's not going to be the solution to our problems here. Um, let's look at this from the second point now that I want to take into account. And I've gotten into a lot of heat for this when I say music is not the core product anymore for an artist. Now, people are freaking out. If it's music isn't the core product, then what is? And here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that music isn't a product that you can sell. You can still sell albums, vinyls, all that kind of good stuff. Music can still be a product. But if you were honest with yourself and you looked at the broad landscape of consumers, you know, fans who consume music, are they predominantly buying music? Or are they predominantly buying other things like concert tickets, live stream access, VIP experiences, merchandise, t-shirts, things like that, right? I guarantee you they're paying for those things as opposed to, oh, the only thing, the one thing I need to get from the artist is a CD. Most cars don't have CD players. Most people don't have boom boxes at home like they used to when I was growing up. I remember I used to have the big giant batteries that I put into the, the giant boom box and I got a new CD and it was awesome. And then you bumped into it and then the CD started going crazy. And yeah, good times, good times for those of you that remember that. And uh, <laughs> some of you are younger, like I don't remember those days at all. <laughs> so here's the point though. I take the position that because music has been put in this position where it's on streaming platforms, it's on demand available, and it's not just Spotify that has this, y'all, it's YouTube. You go to YouTube, your music's available for free most likely on YouTube. If you, like, so it's not just, you know, let's not just keep throwing the gavel down on Spotify, okay? But you need to understand that your music is therefore a way to get new fans into your world, right? So you wanna give the music away for free. So if you're giving the, way, the music away for free because you want people to be impacted by the music before they ever spend a dollar with you, because I think that's actually a really noble thing to do is to say, hey, I actually wanna give you my art for free. 
just be impacted by the art. And if you feel like it's worth something or you feel like you want to support me in some way, I've got some ways that you can do that. That's the model we're trying to do here. But it seems like a lot of artists are trying to say like, no, people should just pay me more money. <laughs> Where are they going to get the money from? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's chill out here. We can't just steal from other people to give to others. But music has turned into marketing. That's what your music is now. Now, people get mad when I say that because they think I'm limiting what music is by saying it's marketing. Well, I, I, the same thing could be applied if you were talking about a product. If you want music to be the main product, are you not limiting music to being just a product? Like. I don't think it's, I think it's a faulty way of viewing the whole issue. When I say music is your marketing, what I'm saying is music is the thing that you put out there to impact people's lives and get people to care about you as an artist. Because if they haven't heard your music, how are they ever going to support you in any other fashion, right? So you want to give your music away for free as marketing so that people hear that music and go, oh, that's wonderful, that song really resonates with me, or that's a fun song, I'm gonna put that on when I'm driving down the highway, or I'm at the club, or whatever it happens to be. And so you can build that connection and rapport with your fan base by just giving out your music for free, and then once that rapport is built, you can have other methods that they can support you. Maybe they can join your Patreon or your fan club. Maybe they can buy your t-shirt or your hat. Maybe they can buy guitar lessons or vocal lessons or drum lessons from you. Maybe they can buy studio time with you. Maybe you can produce a song for them. Maybe you're actually a photographer on the side or a videographer or a video editor and, you want to, and you'll offer video editing services. You see what I'm saying? Like every artist is gonna have a different set of skills that they can monetize. They're gonna have audiences that have different preferences. Some audiences are gonna prefer, uh, prefer to have mugs and beanies and others are gonna prefer to have hats and tank tops and others are gonna prefer to have long sleeve and, and you know, you see the idea is depending on whatever your niche is, you wanna figure out what your fans want. Just ask yourself that question. What do my fans want? And then go make that. <laughs> Ask them what they want. Hey, I want this. Okay, I'm gonna go make it for you. I had one uh, client whose fans wanted him to make calendars. I was like, all right, get the policeman outfit out, get the get the fireman outfit out. We're gonna we're gonna have a good. I'm just kidding. We didn't go that route with it. But no, it's the whole point though is you ask the fans what they want, right? And you can use the the music as a way to get them to even care about you in the first place. And isn't that a win? Like even if they didn't buy anything. If your music got out there and reached someone who's now going to listen to that music on a regular basis, that's a win in and of itself. But that alone in small volume does not create a career. So that's why we have to focus on these other things. And this is the thing that I want you to understand. This is always how it has been. Some people say, no, back in the good old days, you didn't have to do all this. Yeah, you didn't have to go on social media and do your own marketing and stuff. But artists have always made money and always made revenue from other places than just their music. Whether it's shows, merchandise, fan clubs, endorsements, clinics, and then sure, music as well. But we have to understand that this mindset that if you sell anything other than music, you're a sellout and you're not a pure artist and I don't, you know, and there's also this sort of defeatist attitude that a lot of artists have where they're thinking to themselves, you know, if I have to put in this extra work, if I have to take on these new responsibilities, then it doesn't sound as glamorous as it used to and I don't want to do it. Well, then I think we would check our expectations a little bit because whoever thinks this business is still glamorous is obviously still buying into the hype of Hollywood and record labels and people of the like. Because the people who have been in this business for any amount of time know that this business is not that glamorous. It's glamorous, it has glamorous moments. You know, I've had moments where I'm, you know, I'm on tour with the guitar player for Creed and I'm doing, you know, I'm meeting, I'm hanging out on the bus and we're trading guitar licks and like, I've had these glamorous moments, but if I took all the glamorous moments, I could fit them into probably two handfuls and then all the unglamorous moments, I would need four dump truck loads to hold. You know what I'm saying? So we all understand that this business is not as glamorous as Hollywood makes it out to be, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. Because I can tell you, for all the dump truck of crap that I've dealt with, those are eclipsed by the beauty of the good moments. When you're out on stage and you're in front of a bunch of people and you're connecting with them and you're sharing things that are actually changing people's lives in a positive way, 
there is nothing better than that. There, that, that beats a great night of merch sales. That is the best thing, okay? But we have to understand that if we're trying to create a career, we have to build a business. And a business to survive has to have products and services. It's just the fact of life. And so your music can be one of those products, but, and it was for musicians for many, many, many years. And so out of all the different stuff they sold, music was the forerunner as the best product. But now it's sort of drifted back and everything's become a little bit more localized. So you have to be you know, very uh, curious about what your niche wants and start to dig into those things and really figure out how you can do something that's authentic to you, but also something that your general market wants to actually check out, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so, and then the last thing that I wanna to touch on for today's video, the third thing that's responsible for music not being what it is anymore is not just because the Spotify misunderstanding. It's not just because it's not the core product anymore, but it's like what I'm talking about. It's artist mindsets. So we have to kill the entitlement mentality that is leaking through our community. So if you see this out there, I would say something. I mean, don't bash people, be very respectful to people, but like we need to show artists as a community that is on this page and other pages as well that are serious about musicians getting more entrepreneurially educated is we're not gonna take this narrative of everything would be well and good if these evil corporations just gave us more money. Guys, I hate to break it to you, but Spotify isn't a, they're not that profitable of a company. Like they're really not for what the company is worth they are not as profitable as they should be. People are like, oh, that Daniel CEO guy got like a million dollars. I'm like, yeah, that is a lot of money. But when you look at CEOs that are heads of that big of companies, a million dollar payout is kind of embarrassingly low. I know for some people, a million dollars is more money than they've ever seen in their life. But I want you to look relatively at the corporate world. And the reason this is happening is because Spotify's expenses are around 19 to $20 billion with marketing and everything involved, and their revenue is only about 12 billion. They're losing money, right? And businesses can do okay for a while on that, that train, but it doesn't, rely, it doesn't last forever, you know? So, but people think that it's just because Spotify is greedy and there's this entitlement attitude that like, I just need to get what's owed to me. But what we need to understand is that we are not owed anything. We're, the, we are not owed attention from people who are our potential fans. We are not owed their hard-earned money. We are not owed their emotional investment or their time. We have to earn those things. We have to create content that makes them care. We should not be entitled to think just because I put it out there that therefore means people should care and if they don't care, it's their fault. No, no, no. We need to look at it as how do I get this out there so that people can consume this and enjoy it? Because I believe in what I have, as opposed to this entitlement attitude that you'll see around in the community of people thinking that just because they created a piece of art that people are owed attention, they're owed streams or owed support. When we should be looking at it, how can I earn support from my fans? How can I be you know, presented in a way and compassionate in a way that they resonate with me and want to support me. You know what I'm saying? That's what's really important. And so on the next level of that, on the mindset level, because of this hate for corporatism, which I don't like corporatism either. You know, I'm a free market guy, but I hate the extremist corporate stuff that's out there, the monopolies and the things like that that exist. And because of that and people's natural disdain for that and hate for that, they don't study business at all. They look at business as just corrupt altogether. And it's really sad because all of their favorite artists have utilized business. All of them, a lot, a lot of the modern independent artists like Nick D, Forrest Frank, Connor Price, these people, they're utilizing independent strategies because they understand some basic, basic business stuff, just basic business strategies. And once you start to go and pursue that knowledge, once you start to go pursue, how am I going to learn the skills of business, marketing, getting my music out there so people can be attracted to what I'm doing and I can also push away the people that aren't a good fit. Uh, Taylor Swift does a good job of that. She attracts the perfect people that will love her and then everyone that's not in that group doesn't like her very much. 
I happen to be in the latter category. I think she's a great marketer and her team's a great mark, you know, great marketing force, but I'm not a fan of the music personally, but that's the genius of her marketing. Is she, I'm not in her core demographic, but the people that are in her core demographic, they like her. They, they, they like Taylor Swift, <laughs> you know? I'm not saying she's a bad person or anything, but you know, I, I'm not gonna go on a tip. I talk about Taylor Swift too much on this channel. <laughs> But sometimes I do it just to make some certain commenters mad, but that's okay. And so what I want you guys to understand is that if you can learn business education, basic, basic business education, how do I set up an entity? How do I do my taxes? How do I you know, deduct things? Because a lot of artists are missing out. I worked with a guy named Aaron at Guitar Center who was so smart. He figured out a way to get signed up as an employee under his sole proprietorship so that anything that he bought as a result of being an employee or just related to music anyway, he deducted and, his in and the income that he got from Guitar Center, he was able to put into the sole proprietorship and it, it helps offset the deduct, you know, it helps offset the expenses and he just did some great accounting work and I was like, wow, he was a money smart musician and I loved that kind of strategy but you could tell he was someone who was not afraid to study business education and implement it for himself. Even if he's an artist, he wasn't averse to that kind of stuff. He wasn't like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go look at that stuff because, you know, I'm an artist. I don't look at business and corporatism and greed. Again, it gets pushed into cliches and broad generalizations as opposed to just learning the techniques of business. And then marketing, how do we market? How do we put messaging out there that attracts the right people? How do we put our messaging out there that makes our dream fans care about what we want to do. And then finally, how do we monetize? How do we subtly, you know, we're not trying to be like, Billy Mays here, we're trying to sell OxyCleaner. <laughs> you know, we're not trying to do that, right? We're trying to be just artists who are, hey, how's it going? You know, I want to tell you a cool story. And then at the end of the story, you're like, hey, if you want to support, you could support. And there's ways to do that. I'd work with my clients to help build the stories that actually work and function as persuasive metaphors to help them sell things. But those are all part of sales techniques. You have to commit to learn these things. You have to commit to getting that education so that you can actually develop the traits to have what you want. It's this whole idea of to get what you want, you have to do what's necessary. And to do what's necessary, you have to become the type of person who will do it, right? So it all starts with you changing up here your mindset of saying, I am someone who can learn business. Just like I learned guitar or vocals or drums or songwriting, I can learn business. And I believe that. I, I know whatever instrument of choice that you have decided to learn, whether you're a mixing and mastering audio person, whatever skill in music you've decided to learn, I know that was hard. I've learned a few instruments myself. I know it's hard to learn an instrument. and so. You can do this because you've came out on the other side of that, you can come out on the other side of this. And I guarantee you when you come out on the other side of this, you're gonna be just as much a musician as you were before. I promise that's not going away. I didn't lose any of my musical abilities because I read a business book or I cut my hair. Someone's, some said I would lose my powers when I cut my hair. They were wrong. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, I, I hope you guys have gotten a lot of value from today's video and understand that like, let's stop blaming Spotify. Let's understand the economics that have changed in the music business and the new landscape that we find ourselves in. That really points down to, are we gonna ask fans to start paying one month of Spotify subscription for seven songs, 10 songs, as opposed to they pay that and they get millions of songs? Are we really gonna ask them to say, that's how you should consume music? I doubt we're gonna put that genie back in the bottle. Things have changed, so how do we adapt? How do we understand that since music is not the core money driver anymore, how do we use the music to get people into our universe so we can sell them other things that we have available for them to support us with? Doesn't have to be something that doesn't align with your values. You know, if you, if you don't wanna teach someone guitar because you don't know how to teach someone guitar, then you don't have to offer that product or that service, right? If you don't like selling t-shirts, that's strange to me, but you don't have to sell t-shirts. Maybe you sell hats or something like that. I don't know. But the idea here is that we change our mindset and we start looking at this like, okay, this is the landscape I'm in. How do I utilize it to the best of my abilities and become more resourceful? 
right? That's gonna be one of your biggest assets as an artist, is becoming more resourceful. And stop asking things like, you know, why can't I afford this? And start asking questions like, how can I afford this? Or why can't I do this? How can I do this? Right, you switch the mindset from the, why can't I, I'll never be able to blah, 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 to how do I do it? How can I figure it out? How can I learn how to do this? And I guarantee you that mindset will take you light years ahead of where the other one will. If you got a lot of value out of this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, hit the like button, and also, uh, Give me a comment. I'd love to know your thoughts. Maybe you think I'm wrong on this whole thing and you still think Spotify is the devil. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear it. And also, I'll be happy to let some of you guys know that you stuck out to the end. This is your reward. This is the last video with this mic. I got this microphone back in 2017 on Amazon. When I very first started this channel way back in the day, I wanted to figure out how to get a little bit better sound. And so I got this microphone. And so it's not the most expensive mic in the world, but I finally upgraded to a Rode mic right here. And you may be like, Dex, why aren't you wearing it right now? Because I have to uh, get an adapter for this TRS to TRRS so I can use it uh, to record my audio. But you'll be happy to know for those of you that don't particu particularly like the sound of this mic, this is the last video where, that we're using it. So it's been a long ride from 2017 to 2024 with this mic, but uh, it's going away. I just figured I'd share this uh, fun little information at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on another Musicians Ignite. Take care.